Hello and welcome back to my channel. So you've decided to mine. At the time of uploading this video, which you can check below, this is not the best decision, not the best financial decision. There are a couple of reasons for that. Number one, the profits have just come down a bit and uh, the, the, the currencies are very volatile at the moment. They're moving up and down too fast for anybody to keep, it, uh, keep up with them. Anyway, the second reason would be that Ethereum is moving to Ethereum 2.0. So therefore proof of stake. If you are new to mining, you might not know these terms. You might want to Google them. So as soon as Ethereum moves to point of uh, proof of stake, the, the, the whole uh, market would move and it could go anywhere. So it could go up, down, or I don't know what's going to happen, but something is going to happen. It might be good or bad for you. And the first thing you want to think about is you want the return on investments on your mining rig, right? So if you're entering into Bitcoins or uh, Ethereum for that matter, at this time, um, you probably not get your return on investments. Not at the moment. You might get it later on, but not at the moment. Anyway, having said that, and this is not financial advice, by the way, uh, having said that, you want a list of things that you want to start mining, right? So mostly, probably, people don't tell you about it and they avoid the topic anyway. Uh, I would, however, tell you what you need to buy in order to start mining. Right. So the first thing we start with is motherboard, right? So which motherboard would do? Tell you the truth, any motherboard would do. Even a motherboard from 10 years ago would do. As long as it has the required numbers of adopters for PCI, it should work perfectly. Now, the required number of PCIe depends on you. For example, you want to rig with six PCIe, or you want to attach six motherboard, six graphics card to it, then six PCI would do. If you want eight, if you want 10 or 12, and so on. You can search on the internet. However, contrary to popular belief, you don't need a specialized uh, motherboard. There are specialized motherboards, by the way. I'll put some pictures in here to let you know which ones but any motherboard which supports uh, six PCI e slots would do okay PCI one slot I'll highlight it for you and uh, now you think about the processor right any compatible processor would do right even if it's a Celeron Pentium 4 it doesn't matter okay processors actually really don't matter Right, so you can have any processor as long as it turns on, it's all right. Okay, uh, so as long as it's compatible, you should be all right. Now we come to RAM. Okay, um, how much RAM do you need to start mining? Okay, um, eight gigabytes, four gigabytes, two gigabytes, anything over four would do, even four would do. Okay, so four gigabyte RAMs are more than enough. If you want to increase it to 8, well, you can, but there will be no use for it, right? So, mining rig really does not use a lot of RAM. Uh, if you be putting six, 16 gigabytes RAM up there, you'll be wasting your money, okay? And you want a return on investment as soon as possible. So, wasting money is not what we're about to do here. We want to save as much as possible. So, fast RAM and uh, these many gigabytes and uh, gigahertz and what and what not. You don't need all this uh, fancy uh, things. All you need is basic stick of RAM, four gigabytes. Don't worry about dual channel and single channel and triple channel and what and what not. Just put one four gigabyte stick in there and get it over with, right? Uh, two, two, uh, two, two gigabyte sticks will not hurt. Many many rigs don't have uh, more.
more than two slots so you might want to be a bit careful and you might want to expand in the future if something else comes up that is uh, ram intensive then we can probably you know use that but at the moment four gigabyte sticks cheapo chinese stick would do as long as your system turns on should work okay CP, uh, cpu mining uh, gpu mining is not memory intensive so you will not need uh, heavy uh, or faster rams or faster i don't know processors you don't need them really don't waste your money on there on that i will tell you where to spend all your money next uh, now that you have your base system okay we come to power supply now there are two strategies that people actually use in uh, figuring out which power supply you need first power supply that you might be interested in is one of those uh, Corsair 1200 watt power supplies, 1200, 1600, you know, one of those big power supplies where that can, you know, uh, hundreds of watts and all. Uh, a 1200, 1600 watt power supply would do you good for about, I don't know, five, uh, uh, five GPUs, uh, whereas they might even be able to uh, support uh, six GPUs. Okay, so um, what you have to keep in mind is one CP, one GPU would take about, let's say, 100 watts just to be on the same side, right? So one GPU would take 100 watts. So if you have six GPUs, it'll take 600 watts. However, the motherboard processor RAM fans will also take watts. So you might want to be careful there, especially if you're putting high pressure um, fans in your rig they take a lot of voltage so you might want to leave some overhead over there right so a 1200 watts power supply would do you good okay however you don't want to uh, say like for example i have six uh, gpus and 600 watts is more than enough no 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 it's not more than enough and it's not even there okay 600 watts for each gpu plus um 100 watts for each GPU plus about 100 150 watts for the whole uh, other system to run. Okay, so you want to be careful there. Okay, so a 1200 watts power supply that is one option. The second option is you can get I don't know 400 watts power supply to power the motherboard and power the motherboard only. Okay, and obviously maybe you want to power power, uh, power a, a graphics card. Oh sorry, uh, power a hard disk or in this case ssd okay you don't want to play on the part of hard disk because hard disk takes more voltage because it has spinning things going on inside and we don't want uh, more voltage to be consumed so we'll put an ssd there which will take a minimum amount of voltage uh, that is possible so maybe a 400 watts power supply to uh, power the motherboard and then you can have let's say an hp 1200 watts power supply with a breakout board and wires to uh, support the graphics cards, right? So, either one power supply to power the whole entire system, okay, or two power supplies, whereas one is a cheap or a low powered power supply, and the other one is an HP server grade power supply. Uh, do keep in mind that. The other power supply, the 1200 watts uh, PC power supply, is not designed to work 24 hours. Okay, however, it can do. Okay, it's not that it won't do. It won't uh, power. It will power, but it's not designed. The cooling system and everything is not designed to be working 24 hours at full load. Okay, so that being said, uh, HP power supply, uh, HP server power supply, is designed. To work 24 hours actually it is designed to be turned on and never turned off again right so you know servers don't actually get turned off okay they just get turned on and that's it but that's about it okay uh, the only point you would turn off a server is if there is something wrong in the server which happens very less because they have redundant everything so you know uh server power supply with a decent breakout board and uh, wires enough to cover your uh, connections 
would do really nice. Okay. What you want to be careful in this power supply, you see now we come to the careful part, right? So what you want to be careful in this is you don't want to use a cheap power supply. Okay. HP server power supply is branded HP power supply, so you shouldn't have any problems there. However, if you were to buy a computer power supply and you were to buy 1200, 1600 watts power supply, you don't want the name of the power supply to be Great Wall or Red Dragon. Because Dragon is bad for you. Okay, Having a uh, powerful power supply, a 1600 watts power supply, and having it from a cheap source, for example, a Red Dragon or, uh, you know, Color Power or something, is bad for your house and everything because it might just catch on fire, right? However, if you buy a proper company like Corsair or uh, I don't know, Ant, My Ant Miner or something, I'll put some pictures up here so for you to have a look. Um, you should be all right, okay? Uh, they have safeties built in and they have quality uh, quality components in there. Then uh, they have quality checks and everything. So you should be all right, okay? Uh, they do care. They do care about their name, so they should put quality things in there uh, in order to, you know, you don't want your house to catch on fire, do you? So you want proper equipment. Okay, in this power supply department, you don't want to uh, skip here. You want to spend maximum amount of uh, power, uh, maximum amount of money to get the best power supply that you can possibly get for your money, right? Right? I'm not saying buy the most expensive one in the market. Be smart, right? I'm just saying be smart. Okay. Uh, you don't want to buy a, a cheap power supply, and when you do buy a power supply, okay, make sure you have enough connections for everything that you want to plug in. Okay. You don't want to have less connections than the, uh, the the things you want to connect in, right? So make sure you have enough connections. On the breakout board, there are two types of wires, okay? So these wires, uh, I have no company or nothing, but you know, you have to get to because there is nobody branding it or nothing. And they are made in China and that's about it. Um, the breakout board uh, for the HP power supply, okay? It can have two types of wires. Number one wire would be six pin to eight pin. Actually, the one would be six pin to six pin, which you want to avoid at all cost. Okay, because most of the graphics cards are uh, 8 pins, okay, unless you own 4 gigabytes, then it's a different story on here. Anyway, so, 6 pin to 6 pin, not a good idea. No, 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 no. Okay, 6 pin to 8 pin, okay. But what you want to look out for is 6 pin to dual 8 pin. I'll put a picture here and let you know. Okay, so 6 pin to dual 8 pin. That is the connection you want, okay? And you want to be careful not to cross uh, the threshold of how much this power uh, this power supply can supply the power, right? So you don't want to cross uh, 1200 watts. You don't even want to cross 1000, I'll tell you the truth, right? You need to leave some overhead just in case your power, your graphics card supplies uh, demands for more power and, for example, you don't have it, right? So that's not a good thing. So you want to leave some overhead. Um, HP power supply. Oh, yes. The most important part about this HP power supply, right? This HP power supply would give you a hundred and some, um, basically, it will give you 750 watts if you connect it to 110. Okay, so you want to be very careful there. Uh, 750 watts in 110 if the electricity supply is 110, and a 12, uh, 1200 watts if the power supply is. 220 volts, 220, 240, it doesn't really matter, right? So, when you connect it to 110, okay, you're not getting the full performance, okay? And you're getting less watts, okay? So, you want to be careful there. You don't want to uh, ask for more watts than the power supply can give, right? So, 220, you plug a 220 and it should give you 1200 watts. However, if you uh, connect 110 to the same power supply, it will give you 750. So you want to be careful there. Third thing we come up at is the GPU. Okay. Now, uh, no, no, no. Before we get to GPU, we need risers. Okay. We need proper risers. Now, the risers you want to get is.
is this one. Okay. You do not want to get any other riser. Okay. Just be careful. You know, you're only getting this riser and not any other type because, you know, you don't want to connect your risers with uh, SATA cables or IDE cables. You want to connect them with uh, PCIe power connectors only. Okay. This is for your safety, for your house's safety and not to catch everything on fire. Okay. Not to say that SATA, work, uh, SATA connectors won't work. They will work. Okay. However, you know, try to avoid them as, as, um, as much as possible. Okay. That being said, now we, first, uh, now we finally come to GPUs. Okay. GPUs, the best GPU that you can get at the moment for price and performance is RX 580. RX 588 gigabytes GPUs are good. Okay. They were actually the best. They are still actually very, very nice. Okay. You don't want to go to the NVDI row root. I don't actually write like NVDI uh, GPUs, but you can buy them if you want. They are expensive. They used to be expensive uh, when before the market hype. They are still expensive and they give you lower performance. In mining, mind you, I'm not saying the graphics card don't give you good performance. I'm saying in mining, they would give you less performance than an RX 580. Okay, so if you were to have a GTX 1060, okay, it'll give you lower performance than an RX 580. If you were to have a, a GTX 1070, it'll give you almost uh, RX 580 uh, territory, but it'll be more expensive, right? Even before the price hype, it grows too expensive. Uh, even uh, after the price hype, it, it's just gone impossible. Anyway, RX 580, they are quite expensive after the hype. Before the hype, they used to be really cheap and people didn't value them at, the, at that moment. But uh, after that, nowadays, they are uh, expensive. But however, uh, price to performance, even at this moment, after the hype in the price and everything, price to performance is very nice. Okay. Now, the only uh, GPUs that you want to get for mining in the RX department are the RX 480 or the RX 580. Okay. Mind you, there are a couple of other uh, ones that are really profitable. And for that, uh, to find out which ones you can actually use for mining, Okay, I'll make another specific video for every component, but uh, you can go to whattomine.com and they'll have a list of uh, GPUs that are profitable and that are in their list. Okay, there are some which are not profitable, but then you'll find out, won't you, that how much a uh, graphics card would make for you. So, uh, you want to go uh, visit whattomine.com. Don't worry, the website will be down there, uh, down in the description, so you can just click on it, really. Uh, whattomine.com, click it and... The next thing you know is it will tell you every graphics card that is profitable from the NVDI and from the RX department. Okay, so you will have that thing sorted. Now I will talk about RX 580 and 480 for that matter. Uh, you want to buy RX 580? Okay, there are some specific ones that will be really nice for you. Okay, for example, the best uh, one I found uh, till now is the RX 580 Sapphire. Nitro Plus Core Clock Edition. Okay. Second one would be RX 580 R1. Also Core Clock Edition. So you should be uh, fine there. Okay. MSI does some good graphics card thingies. Okay. But then uh, you want to be careful about on the giga gigabyte side. Gigabyte also does RX 580. You know, many companies do RX 580. Uh, Chinese do rx580 the performance is however somewhat the same but you know you want to avoid them especially the gigabyte part right because uh, chinese have copied the gigabyte uh, design okay i will put a picture here uh, they've copied the uh, design and then now you can't tell rail from the fake even if you plug it into a computer it will still say it is a certain type of uh, graphics card and when you start mining with it then it might not be that card or it might not give you that performance however it will still say i am that graphics card right 
uh, in the BIOS, in everything, in the settings, it will tell you it's uh, that graphics card. Uh, there are many variants, so I'm not naming any. So, for example, it says I'm a GTX 1070, 1080 and whatnot. Okay, and then you find out it's a GTX 960 or something, right? So, <clears throat> you'll only find out after the GPU starts mining, right? Sometimes uh, lower, graph uh, lower uh, game performance would also... Uh, indicate that this is not the real thing, but definitely you can find out after you start mining. And in the RX department, you do want to BIOS mod your graphics cards, right? So remember, okay, so if you get an RX uh, card, okay, especially a 580 or a 480, okay, you want to BIOS mod them. Now you want to be careful uh, from some people that would actually take a 470, for example and change the bios to say that this is a 580 and then sell it to you for more money okay so you want to be careful there. Okay. so that should be about it get a um, get a frame okay get a frame that will fit all your gpus there are no specifications on the frame everybody makes their own i'm sure you can get some in the in the shop and that's it really you should be set to go okay uh, watch some uh, videos uh, where you want to mine is uh, Linux. Okay, do not go uh, the Windows route. Okay, there are uh, certain advantages to Linux, and don't worry, uh, Linux is not the Linux that you would uh, remember. You basically you just turn it on and leave it, and you control everything from your Windows computer anyway. So don't go the Windows route. Otherwise, you need Team Viewers and stuff to uh, remote into the uh, the computer, which obviously you don't want to do. Okay. Have a nice day. I think you have already uh, take. I have taken a lot of time of yours and. Um, this video hopefully is enough for you to get started. Okay, more videos coming soon on this topic. Have a nice day.